Tenarchi Invia Est Via, it says on the key, which basically means that you can achieve pretty much anything you like in life if you have the balls for it. Now, given that Spiker have just bought Saab, you kind of want to sit up and listen to what they're talking about, especially as they've just produced this, the C8 Alien. £200,000, 400bhp V8, and on sale in a showroom near you, preferably in Los Angeles, soon. The people at Spyker are really, really proud, not only of the exterior of this car, but also the interior, and it's pretty obvious why. The detailing in here is absolutely off the dial. There is not a single piece of material in this cabin that isn't either aluminium or leather. From the gear gator, even to the pedals, to this beautiful turned aluminium dashboard, it is overall very, very special indeed. In areas it goes a bit over the top. It could even be accused of being slightly vulgar by some people, but you cannot fault the craftsmanship. It is beautifully put together, not just inside, but outside as well. So let's have a look at a few of the exterior details. Well, really everything styling-wise about the Spiker is related to the aircraft industry, because that's where the company's roots are based. In 1914, they, they were involved in the aircraft industry. Hence, you get these lovely kind of jet fighter engine resembling air vents. This actually cools the engine, and this one down here cools the diff. But also, you come back to the rear wheels. They're absolutely exquisite to look at. They're made from aluminium, and again, they're designed to look like the internals of a jet engine. And they also channel air away from the rear brakes, which is a really nice touch. But design detail to end all design details is under here. You might like this. Luggage by Louis Vuitton. Never before has Louis Vuitton agreed to do luggage for a car maker, but somehow Spiker have persuaded them to do it. The cost, though, you need to take a very deep breath because this will set you back 18 and a half thousand euros. You have to love them for that though. So those are the exterior and some of the interior details, but what is this thing actually like to drive? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. Some things it does really, really well, one of which is the way it steers. You can definitely feel the Lotus influence in the way this car just absolutely is millimetre precise through corners, but it's also got lots and lots of feel through the rim. I love the steering, I love it a bit. I quite like the flappy paddle gear change, even though it's an automatic gearbox, which means you don't have the kind of urgency of a, a double clutch paddle. It still changes gear very smoothly, quite quickly. Not a lot wrong with the gearbox. At the moment, I don't like the brakes much, but then they are re-engineering them apparently to be a bit less punchy. At the moment, they are very punchy indeed. It stops well, but it just... The nose dives into the floor every time you go anywhere near the brake pedal, and I don't like that at all. For me, at £200,000, it should be a bit quicker than this. Spiker says that its customers don't necessarily want more performance because they're not in competition with Ferrari, they're adjacent to Ferrari people that buy spikers have already got 10 Ferraris and 10 Lamborghinis. I'm not sure I quite buy into that. If I'm spending £200,000 on a sports car, I want it to be a little bit faster than this. I certainly don't want to be completely and utterly dusted by a standard 911, and this thing would be dusted by a standard 911. The other thing I'm not sure about, and this comes down to purely personal taste, I just don't like the way it looks, I'm afraid. Spikers customers say they absolutely adore the styling, and that's fair enough, they're only going to sell 80 to 100 cars a year. But I'm afraid the way this car looks is a very long way from being up my street. Spike will hate me for saying that, but I'm sorry, that's how I feel. Tell you what though, it does sound quite good. Get a load of this.